What's cracking, everybody, and welcome to episode 117 of the Good Cracking Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Arnell Pearson, alongside the inevitable one, Devin Stanford. How you doing, baby? Doing good, doing good. How about yourself, man? Oh, you know, dude, I'm, I'm cold. It's cold over in my place right now. You're looking... It got cold again. It's I know. Again. I hate I hate it. Out, out here in the Pacific Northwest, it's been not not too fun being yeah. in the chilly, chilly. You're looking dapper as hell, though, my guy. Dude, I've just been feeling myself lately, you know? You know, I'm <laughs> feeling you. I'm feeling you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wore a button-up yesterday, and I wasn't even on camera. I was just like, yep. Oh damn! This is nice. Are you do you do you like the half the half button up? Like you leave a little. Uh, bit no, I just going? I just go up to right here. You know. Okay. All right. You, you know. gotta keep it sexy, yeah. but not too sexy, right? Like you gotta like limit the <laughs> <laughs> the gains yeah. on that. You know. You know, I gotta be comfortable. You know, like like you said, it's cold out there. Comfortable and sexy. So yeah, you gotta you gotta keep it like uh, uh what's what's the word for it? Is it um uh uh, uh um. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. either. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I know. Honestly, I was, I was like I said earlier, I had a late night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking great, man. You're looking great. The other one Thank that you. we have here is the wonderful, the amazing, our homeboy, the good old Michael Hyam. How you doing, dog? Hey, I'm doing all right. Hey, what's uh, we, poppin', yeah. We, dude? Hey, we we were shopping it up earlier, but you know, it's uh, it's ups, it's downs, but uh, mm-hmm. for now. I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm excited to chop it up with y'all again because hey, uh, yeah, it, it's it's been too long. You it's, know, it's it's uh, been a while. We're we're always yeah. fucking happy to have you here, dude. Like like we oh. we were talking about it earlier. Like it's you're you're such a blessing for for us and our lives and what we do here. Like we're super fucking thankful for you. In the meantime, though, for people who don't know who you are, who are you? What are you about? Throw us down your links and stuff, my guy. Whoa, hey. Uh, so I'm Michael Heim. I first got into the industry I, I was with GameSpot for a very long time uh, I was actually chilling with a lot of my old co-workers at GameSpot the other the other day and we was reminiscing the old times and uh, checking out the new office space and all that other stuff uh, but yeah I, I did a lot of I was a writer editor I covered a lot of things um, I was also on, on camera video host so if y'all any of y'all watched uh, the official live E3 2021 coverage last year I was on that with oh, folks like Greg go. Miller, Jackie Jane, Golden Boy. That's the yes, homie. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, that was um, that's kind of what I was doing. And then um, I had an opportunity with Fanbyte. So I'm with Fanbyte now. Fanbyte.com. Hit video game website. And it's, it, they're very much an up-and-coming. We are very much an up-and-coming website that yes, sir. is, I think, personally, the reason. I was a fan of Fanbyte before I jo- joined them. But it's they're an all. Uh, a really a good spin on what you expect out of video game websites. So it's very f- free form. We speak our minds. We we talk shit in the head. Like we can say what we want on the headlines. Uh, we can be very real with ourselves. And I think a lot of people respect that. And I think it's a breath of fresh air in the games media that you can have an outlet that's full of really talented people from bigger sites before. Like I came from GameSpot. Imran Khan came from Game Informer. Um, Elise Fab is uh, she came from Game Informer as well, Washington Post, and uh, uh, folks like Natalie Flores. There's just, like a lot of people who are just really talented, high level writers and editors who are now kind of have this platform to be a little bit more more uh, freeing. And then so for me joining Fanboy, I was like, yo, that's that sounds that sounds great. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. And oh, I yeah, cover dude. primarily uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. So of course you uh, do, my man. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, uh, I've been playing that a lot lately. Oh, yeah, word! Yeah, you sold him yeah, on yeah. it, dude. You sold him on Shit. it. He was, he, was, okay, okay. he was grinding for like three and a half weeks straight, man. Like I couldn't get oh, this shit. dude to do anything on time. <laughs> <laughs> he was in love oh, with man. it, dude. That's not surprising, that, though. You talked dope. about it for a minute. Yeah. Oh, that that's 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 good to hear, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, it's primarily what I cover now, and uh, it's been good. It's been yeah, good. I, I think, especially for yeah, my my situation. Like, I had open heart surgery. Like, we might talk about this later, but like, uh, yeah, that was sure. a tough time. And I think that fanbite is like the perfect place to kind of like respect you ta- your time and give you space for things that you need to take care of in your life. So it's uh, it's been working out for the best. That's good, that's dude. Good. I'm, that sounds really good. We're mm-hmm. stoked for you, man. That's that's awesome. I know. I know that like the the place of work jump is is always stressful but i'm glad that you found a place doing it fan by and you can tell that you know you and imran are having the most damn fun because i've seen <laughs> i've seen uh, imran's articles on there like damn he's so happy to be there oh this. yeah Im- 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 imran's a perfect kind of person to do that because he loves talking shit mm-hmm. uh and like <laughs> when if he can channel that energy into his his uh his articles i'm like 
Yeah, say that I shit, know, man. Dude, it's so good, dude. It's so yeah, good. It's, Sometimes it's it just needs to be said, too. Sometimes it's absolutely, yeah. a little shit, baby. You, know? yeah, you just got to tell the truth sometimes, you damn, know what I'm saying? Like, damn, God damn. <laughs> I know, I know. We're going to be talking a little bit of shit with you guys at home because today we're talking an understandable bummer. I got a fever and why you need to try Lumpia right now and much, Ooh. much more because this is the good Kraken podcast. Your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you want to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. If you're riding this wave, you can head on over to patreon.com slash show where you can submit questions and topics to the show, get exclusive post-show content, and have early access to episodes before they go live on podcasts and video services across the digital sea. Yarg. But if you've emptied your pockets for the latest and greatest in entertainment, that is totally fine. You can watch us record this show live right here at twitch.tv slash good cracking show. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime. We'd love for you to give that to us to help keep us pushing content out for all of you listening or watching at home. But you can also support us by going to our YouTube channel by clicking that beautiful bell and big red button or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching good cracking with an exclamation mark, and leaving a review there. Can you give me that review, Devin? Can you give me that? I'll, I'll you drop you a review. review. Hey, there we go. I got let's you. go, let's go, <laughs> baby. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Devin, we have oh, no. some captain's orders, my guy. Uh, first off, guys, our gameplay, uh, last night we streamed uh, Evil Dead the Game uh, right here on twitch.tv slash good cracking show. And uh, we're going to be putting that up on our YouTube video later. Uh, not YouTube video. Our YouTube channel later on tonight for you guys to be able to uh, to watch and goof around with us. Very, very fun experience. Surprisingly enough, it's the first game that we've done on like an opening night in a while that had perfect server connection. Like, <laughs> it was, like we've we've been struggling with some games lately that to make that crossplay work and like make everything you know come together correctly. This is the first time we were very pleasantly surprised. And on top of that, the game is a lot of damn fun. Um, very very cool take on Dead by Day- Daylight sort yeah. of style thing. Um, it's been so damn cool to experience that. Um, also on top of this, uh, we want to let everybody know our Discord is open for public. Uh, you guys want to hang out with us, chat with us. Uh, kick it with us kick with the fish family is what we call ourselves um come in hang out with us dude join our discord uh we basically are in there in our chill chat channel basically virtually every night um just kicking it with people chopping up with people kicking it back you know what i'm saying uh we do things like weekly watch alongs for disney plus marvel content we have all sorts of stuff in there you guys want to kick it with us and be our brothers and sisters and ladies and thems and you know what i'm saying like come in and, and do the motherfucking thing with us you know what i'm saying it's, it's a lot of fun it's in been here. really fun fun lately we've had like dozen plus people all hanging out meeting each other it's been awesome it's oh god man last, <laughs> last night we played a uh, scribble.io or scriblio or however you pronounce it that was a bonkers game <laughs> night yeah, of a uh, uh, fun little scribbly gaming for us mm-hmm. but uh in the meantime Devin, tell the people at home what we got going on next my guy yo we are going into our helm let's go that's <laughs> right that's right <laughs> You got some news. <laughs> yeah, it's damn good. Uh, Devin, I think uh, we'll, we'll just swing you the first the first uh, three. Yeah. Ahead, yeah. So uh, this is this one's a bit of a bummer, but uh, it's it's all probably for the best of reasons, yeah. as we've seen in the past. Uh, Starfield and Redfall has been delayed to 2023. And this is coming directly from Bethesda themselves on Twitter. Quote, we made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield for the first half of 2023. The teams at Arcane Austin and Bethesda Game Studios have incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires all of us every day and drives our own excitement for what we are creating. We can't wait to share the first deep dive into gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for the support. So, I don't know about yeah, you guys. Yeah. I, I I was like slightly bummed, but like as we've seen in the past with like games like Cyberpunk and you know Fallout seventy six and other other things. Sure, I'm okay with the delay because obviously they wouldn't be doing it without needing it. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I want these games to be as good as they can be. Of course, you know? yeah, of course, yeah. I I don't I don't think anyone was surprised by this. It was it almost felt like I saw the news in the morning. Like oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. uh, it's like oh shit. I, I don't think um, like the thing is when Starfield was revealed that last E3, 
that trailer had a date embedded in it. So yeah. it was kind of like, oh, they're really, they're really committing to that date. Yeah. And uh, the first thing I thought of was like, ah, like I hope y'all can make it, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to like uh, delays are always, there's always, like you said, there's always a reason that there's a delay and Bethesda like games in that lineage, especially leading up to Starfield have a, they have a history of being very buggy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. Every Fallout is, you know, they're they're infamous for bugs. They're great games, but they're infamous for their for their buggy stuff. And I think that, you know, based on what Todd Howard has said and Pete Hines have said about their game studios, like they want to kind of shake off that reputation. But to do that, especially for something as ambitious as Starfield, like that takes a lot of time. And mm -hmm. they're one th like, of course, I don't think anyone should expect them to be like a hundred percent polished, like. Their games are so big with so many interconnected systems that shit will just break. That that's just what it is. But to kind of like mitigate, uh, minimize that stuff, like that's that shit takes time, man. So uh, I hope yeah. I hope that's the case for Starfield uh, and the case for Redfall. I didn't even know it was supposed to come out this year. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, I yeah. think they had it like projected for like August or September originally. Uh, is yeah. if is it what I remember like recalling? Because yeah, they said like late summer of 2022 right yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. i mean i mean like you're you're right right like these these are two very ambitious titles specifically starfield right because like we know kind of like what that's supposed to be circling around this super intergalactic space epic that we're supposed to be getting out of this and like that's a big big asking um especially coming off like the you know the code of something like cyberpunk that we saw the end results of and exactly, like yeah. i i it's crazy to think how the rest of these studios have just basically been like we just need to not have that happen yeah, right that's kind of like the yeah. benchmark of like <laughs> let's let's avoid <laughs> that <laughs> shit if we can absolutely yeah. Really help it um mike i don't i don't know like do you are you much of a bethesda dude yourself like are you super excited about these games too or yeah i i'm i'm huge into specifically arcane uh i think their work i have like i love immersive sims dating back to the original deus ex it's one of the most influential mm. games personally like i played that yeah. when i was 13 i'm like yo my life has fucking changed yeah um, so i i love that lineage of deus ex and then kind of Harvey Smith, who's uh, the the lead for Arcane and uh, his work with Deus Ex and then eventually Dishonored. I was like, yo, Dishonored is kind of like carrying that torch. Uh, so I love Dishonored a lot. I love um, uh, like Prey. I thought Prey was amazing. Was I thought <laughs> Deathloop was a great evolution of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously, so Redfall is such a different thing because it's a right. it's I mean, it was first revealed uh, last year at E3 also. And you kind of looked at it like, what, what is this? It was just, it was just like a promotional trailer and like, that's cool. And I was like, well, that'll come when it comes. And then they're kind of talking about how it's a, it's like a co-op shooter. And this isn't so necessarily something that Arcane has a history with. Uh, and I think they were kind of test. I, I, so damn, hold on, let me back up. I always, <laughs> I always see Bethesda's game or Arcane's games is like, they're making a game that's great, and then they're also testing ideas for the next game. Yeah, uh, and I saw I saw yeah. that from like Prey to Dishonored, from Dishonored two to 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 Deathloop, and I think like Deathloop going in the much more action shooter direction mm -hmm. is kind of like okay, well, how can we further develop that style of game and then make that into a co op shooter for uh, I'll say Redfield, Redfall. Red Starfall and combine Red them. Combine those. <laughs> those. That's three, what they yeah. need. To <laughs> um, I really and I, I just really hope that they can pull it off because there's there's a lot of like co-op shooters. I think uh, the mm -hmm. space is a little bit it's a little bit crowded. Uh, yeah. I would say like everyone loves their Destiny. Everyone loves like their live service shooters. Apex is great. Um, obviously, like Redfall is going for something different. Um, I think leaning closer to like that that Left for Dead kind yeah. of thing with. So I and I'm hoping they. I think they've talked a little bit about how they're incorporating some of their RPG elements that they've had a history of that they're known for. Like that's their forte. Yeah. And I really want to see like that get integrated into like, oh, we have a co-op shooter with deep RPG elements. Like that could be dope. Uh, but again, that's a ways off. I would probably. I would say it's a. It's a holiday next year game. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. It's 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 yeah. pretty crazy to see, but we'll we'll definitely see it as it comes. In the meantime, we do have some good news here. Uh, Devin, mm -hmm. hit them with it. Yeah, uh, Alan Wake remastered announced for the Nintendo Switch. This is coming directly from Cat Bailey over at IGN. Remedy creative director Sam Lake introduced the port during a video in which he also provided updates on Alan Wake Two 
in the brand new Alan Wake TV show. Lake and actor Ikea Vili offered a brief glimpse of an in-development build, but provided little other information. Previously released in October 2021, Alan Wake Remastered is the updated version of the open world survival game first released on Xbox 360. The original game was lauded for its atmosphere and the, a sequel is now in development. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Did, did you guys play Alan Wake? Oh, doggy dog. That game was fantastic. Alan Wake. That was a fucking yeah. <laughs> good game, Mike. That was a good yeah. game. What about you, Mike? What do you what do you think? Uh, are, do you think that this has a space on the Nintendo Switch? That's that's kind of what I'm 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 a little it's, curious about. Uh I don't I'm one, I'm I'm curious how it's gonna run. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, feel, I, feel like, I like for I feel like for any game that's like this this I guess graphically it's it's a three six it's a remaster of a three sixty game so yeah. I, I imagine there won't be as many problems because um, I know that Remedy had to when they ported they didn't really port I guess they kind of ported Control to mm -hmm. uh, Switch but they had to use the cloud stuff because like hey no fucking way that Control was gonna run on a Switch that's just you know the nature right. of the hardware right. So, um, but yeah, of course, well, this being a, a remaster of a 360 game, like, I don't think it's that big of a deal if it's, uh, if it doesn't like look great. Uh, I think it's important that it runs well. Um, uh, but Alan Wake is dope. Uh, I feel like p folks who haven't played it, it it's very different because I think, I think that was the first Remedy game after Max Payne. I believe um, so. Yeah. I, I love, I love, yeah. I love Max Payne one and two. I thought those games were fucking dope. Uh, and then Alan Wake was kind of like, well, let's let's lean more into kind of like the psychological horror aspect, because uh, Max Payne had a little bit of that stuff. And then mm -hmm. they kind of went all in with Alan Wake. And it's just like turned out to be this really cool supernatural story. Um, and I think the the excitement for Alan Wake really uh, took a next level because of how it, Control integrated uh, that universe. Like they're one in the same universe. And like when. When I was playing Control, when it for, like on launch week, I'm like, "Yo, I think this is connected to Alan Wake and yeah, shit." And yeah. then and they have the expansion, and then Alan Wake two. So like, it, it's really the thing is like, it's made 10, 12 years later. It's so wild to just see like the Alan Wake hype is mm. back. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, fuck? let's yeah. go. Let's I mean, go. it's so deserving though. It's yeah, so deserving. Uh, it, it actually has like a really good storyline, and and like uh, Cat Bailey was pointing out in in their article, um just that atmosphere right we don't get that in a lot of games anymore you know we we're not really getting the silent hills like we used to we get resident evil like once every few years and they re you know re-release resident evil 4 every other year it seems like <laughs> right. you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but uh i i feel like that that atmosphere is is kind of missing in in the gaming space lately mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. it's it's nice to see it come back i definitely i definitely agree i i think i think that there's a space for this to live my my biggest concern is just how is it going to do on the switch man because i know i know that there's been so many reservations with with people wanting these these games to get ported over that direction mm -hmm. it's like i love my switch don't get me wrong but like there's some experiences that they put on the Switch that m arguably probably shouldn't have been put on the Switch. Cough, <laughs> yeah. cough, The Witcher, right? So it's like uh. there's, <laughs> there's there's some times that the ball may or may not have been dropped. What's up, Devin? What are you, you going to jump in? I will now? say Skyrim runs really well on it, surprisingly. Really well. I'll give them that. Oh, yeah. I'll give them that. Yeah. I, I would hope, That's, though, that after yeah. 18 billion fucking ports that they haven't figured out. <laughs> if you ask me. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, love, I mean, like Skyrim, like that's another OG. Like, obviously, got remastered, but yeah, originally a 360 game, and um, I don't know. Like, Switch is just like the home of ports uh, from that mm -hmm. era, and that's really cool because it was a really fucking good era of video games. So, yeah, so it's like, mm -hmm. hey, I can play. I'm playing like Bioshock Two uh, mm. on Switch right now, and I'm just like, damn. Bioshock 2 was actually really good. Yeah, like the like, fuck? <laughs> so yeah. good, dude. So good, man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fun. It's it's cool to see to see things like that. And I mean, like, we're living in a world where that's even a possibility that we can get games out. We were stuck playing in front of our TVs, like in our hands on a handheld, you know, mobile esque yeah. advice like device. And that that's just the raddest. It's such a good time to be a fucking video game fan, man. And I <laughs> yeah. love every <laughs> single second of it. Uh some with that. You know, there's some other cool stuff that we have coming in with more video game uh, capabilities, and it's cool to see like where that could potentially lead. Uh, Devin, this is a big one. Go for it, my yeah. guy. Yeah, uh, Fortnite is adding Unreal Engine 5 editor later this year, and this is coming over from Tom Phillips over at Eurogamer. 
Speaking to Fast Company, Epic boss Tim Sweeney said the release would allow the full capabilities that you've seen in Unreal Engine opened up so that anybody can build very high quality game content and code and deploy it into Fortnite without having to deal with us. It's open to everybody. Sweeney revealed that about half of Fortnite playtime is now dedicated to creative mode maps rather than Epic's own Battle Royale options. Something highlighted in-game recently by uh, Rijij of the game's menus. So user-made content is, sits primarily as Epic's own modes. Epic's hope is Unreal Editor for Fortnite brings a new level of creativity and monetization to the game. Our aim is to make it a first-class outlet for reaching the consumers, just like you might look at on uh, mobile app stores and consoles and Steam as ways to reach users. Sweeney said, now people are also looking at Fortnite and at Roblox as ways of reaching users. Along with that, we're building an economy and it will support creators actually building businesses around their work and making increasing amounts of profit from the commerce that arises from people playing their content. So interesting. Yeah, Devin, do you, I don't know. This reads really funny to me in a lot of ways, and it reads very cool to me in other ways, because like it's mm -hmm. dope to have developers of all shapes and sizes uh, be able to have access to do very, very cool things, right? Um, even mm -hmm. in our community, we have a gentleman named Griff Nato, who is a uh, mobile game developer, and he loves diving into this nitty gritty, obviously, because that's his career. Um, <clears throat> but having that availability is awesome. Having that availability for the sake of future monetization reads very off-putting to me. Um, Devin, do you do you d does that sit with you the same way or like? <laughs> I mean, like Fortnite, it's it's made its zeitgeist around the world, right? It's it's right. become a pop culture phenomenon. Yeah. But it is top ten games it's of all a, time, according to Good Dragon. By what I don't, don't want to get into that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're still the only person out of our whole team that listen, voted. For that. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some leniency here, okay? Anyways, continue. Um, but like, as I've said before, like one of my big complaints about most battle royales and specifically like Epic is the way that it is a hardcore monetization engine. You know, it, it is a revenue generator, essentially, you know, um, with everything having to be bought for the most part. Yeah. Um, this is just them push. Granted, the tools are very cool. And the opportunities for, you know, people who are learning to be content creators or learning to map build or edit or like play with Unreal, like those tools are awesome. But for them to straight up just be like, our main goal is monetization. That's the said the quiet part out loud. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, at least I, I can give them credit for being transparent, you know, yeah, but absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it is a free game. It is a free game. So like they sure. have to generate money somewhere. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that we don't always like to see in games. Anyways, you know, we saw it with like Star Wars Battlefront, you know, how it was so focused around the loot boxes and stuff, and yeah. Overwatch and FIFA, and, you know, the list goes on. Yeah. But I mean, it's, those it's, are my feelings. It's, it's interesting to see like Fortnite kind of go this direction. Well, you know, um, Epic kind of taking this in, into the swing that they are. And like, obviously Fortnite's very much dwindled down since the days of them being at their peak audience. Right. And so like, mm -hmm. I don't mean dwindled down, like they're nothing now because obviously there's still something right. Like there's still like a cultural life changer for a lot of people. Uh, Mike, my question for you is like, do, do they feel like that they have to do this because they need to make that next step? Like, what, what do you think on that end? Um, I think, well, I, I we're on kind of the, the um, we're on the cusp of having Unreal Engine Five uh, mm. out there, and I, it's just like it's the next generation <laughs> uh, step. So, and you know, to develop develop for the next generation, I think like most people are going to most developers or a lot of developers are going to uh, jump into UE Five, and I think you know making that part of because like like said in the article that um, that creator mode for Fortnite is much bigger than I think a lot of people think it to be. Um, right. And it does it does lean into that Roblox, that Minecraft, uh, like the the like the the player, the hardcore players who are just like want to be creative with that stuff. And you've seen a lot of dope shit come out of the Fortnite creator. Um, so 
attaching that to UE5, it, it makes sense. Like this, the, it, one, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I sure, mean, the lengths sure. of which Tim Sweeney had to explain, I'm like, all right, right, right. Yeah, I get yeah. it. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's just Fortnite prints money. It, it like it, like you said, it might not be in the zeitgeist as much because it's. I feel like we've all accepted it as this thing that is a constant. Fortnite is a con- there's life, death taxes and fucking fortnite Uh, so to us i feel like to us it's just like oh for fortnite has lebron james oh shit fortnite has ariana grande shit i I don't do they have bts yet i feel like that's something that has already happened maybe dude like like (laughs) uh, they've done so much but maybe and you just see it and you're like oh yeah okay that makes sense they're (laughs) even adding slipknot to fortnite (laughs) All right, sure, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I, I saw earlier this day. week. Good for them, man. Good for yeah, them. Yeah, I actually got to look that up here. <laughs> it is so it's so wild. And then so like they're 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 printing. I uh, one of my homies like for um, during GDC came through, and then he was showing me uh, like all of the shit that he bought on Fortnite. I'm like, damn, he has almost all the skins. He dropped like a thousand dollars on that. God, damn. he is not the only one. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there like that. So as long as they just keep putting stuff in, and I think letting people create with UE5 is part of that equation, uh, to keep, uh, Fortnite relevant. Not that it needs, like, it's the, there, there is a huge equation of why Fortnite is relevant and printing money. And I think this is definitely a piece of that, especially carrying it to the next generation with UE5. I love it, man. Yeah. It's, it's gonna, dude, UE5 is fucking exciting i'm so excited yeah. for this to come you to see a viral video the, oh. of the at the train station yeah mm-hmm. dude oh my like, yeah. god i need it i need to shoot that shit straight into my veins dog that that oh. matrix demo like oh mm-hmm. you know that's what i'm saying wild, man. that alive yeah. dude De- devin what'd you have for us so uh yeah can confirm slipknot in Fortnite, and also <laughs> slipknot is being added to smite as well <laughs> All right. Shit. Okay. <laughs> That's cool, expecting. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them, man. Stay in your bag. You know what I'm saying? Stay in your damn bag, yeah, boys. They, they've, like, been, mm. they've been there long enough. They deserve that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some stuff that we probably deserve, though. Christopher Walken joins Dune Part 2 as Emperor Shaddam the Fourth. This comes from Adam B. B. Very over at Variety. And he says this Christopher Walken will join Timothy Chalamet in Zendaya and director Dennis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2 as Shaddam. Dom the fourth, the Padisha Emperor of the known universe. That was a lot of words. I just said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Walken's casting fills out the major characters for the second half of Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's seminal science fiction novel. He joins Florence Pugh from Black Widow as Emperor's daughter, Princess Irulan, I, th- I believe is how it's pronounced. I, I only ever read it, so I don't, it I don't know. Exactly. Right. It looks right. <laughs> yeah, right. Sounds and, right. And Austin Butler starred the upcoming Elvis as Fade Rotha Harkonnen, uh, the presumptive heir to the Harkonnen dynasty. Uh, Villeneuve and John Spates are returning as screenwriters for the sequel, which will be produced by Villeneuve, Mary Parent, Kale Boyder, and Tanya LaPointe and executive produced by Josh Grode, David Valdez, uh, Herbert, Herbert, uh, W. Gaines, I had to say it in the Spanish way, Brian Herbert, uh, Byron Merritt, Kim Her- Herbert, oh my god, lots of Herberts, <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Toll, Spates, Richard P. Rubenstein, and John Harrison. Uh, That's so, a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, goddamn, yeah. goddamn. Uh, so, boys, are we stoked for the Christopher Walken and Dune? Like, are we, are we ready for that? Like, <laughs> I, like, I don't think I've seen him play like a super serious role, like yeah. ever. ever well, yeah, maybe. Right? It's been a really long time. I can't recall anything off the top of my head. Honestly, did you did you watch Dune, Mike? I haven't seen it yet. So, seen it yet? okay, like, okay. Yeah, I, I followed the discourse around it. Uh, and like, obviously a lot of folks said it was probably, it was like one of the best movies that came out and it's in it. And was it last year? Uh, was yeah, it last mm-hmm. year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was last year. Damn, I can't keep track, but yeah, oh, people were like, yo, and like Timothy Chalamet, like, oh shit, yo, young boy's coming up. Um, but yeah, I, I like, I, I read Dune when I was like super young. So right, right. And I don't really remember too much, but, uh, but yeah, this, I don't know. I like Christopher Walken. It's, it's cool. It's cool to think about. I mean, like, this, like, like y'all said, I just want to see what it's like to see to have Christopher Walken in in Dune because, like, Dune has like this very brooding atmosphere, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, like it's it's yeah, it's serious, but it just has a very uh, uh like a, a not damper tone in like a negative sense, but it is it's oppressing. Like Dune, yes. like obviously the story is 
very much revolves around oppression and colonization and things like that. So it just has like this very oppressing atmosphere. Um, and then you put Christopher Walken, and I'm like, all right, like <laughs> let me let me see what that is. Yeah, yeah. it's it's gonna be interesting, man. Because like Devin, you make it, you make a point. Like he's not very often in serious roles, and it's like. I mean, the, la- the last time he played an emperor, we got Balls of Fury, and that was very just not okay. <laughs> yeah, that's movie. right. Not <laughs> okay movie. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I forgot about that movie. Oh, geez. Damn it, man. And so, like, I it's... just had, like, very visceral, like, flashbacks. Yeah. Now, gr- granted, the, the, t- the times were a little bit fucking different back when we were in high mm-hmm. school, you know? So it's like, sure, whatever. But Christopher Walken nowadays, like, when he does take a part, it's still not ever really that serious. And, like, his character, even though his character will be in a serious movie, his character will be the least serious of all the characters in that movie. Mm-hmm. And like, cause he's always this sort of like weird yeah. out there, uncomfortable kind of person to like be talking to in that situation. And like, it comes off as almost intimidating, but Christopher walking in something like this, like I'm kind of here for it. Doggy dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Do you think Christopher Walken is just one of those actors who just literally is just himself in every role? You oh, know, yeah. like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think so. But like, like, it might Nicolas just be Cage. like, yeah, like Nicolas Cage or, or, uh, Will Smith, you know, like, Will Smith. I mean, it used to be like we used to have this view of Adam Sandler like that, right? But mm-hmm. after Uncut Gems, it's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can say that anymore, yeah. you know. Oh, damn yeah. good movie, dude. Oh, my, Uncut Gems is fucking wild. Oh, my yeah. God, it's a great the, movie. The final 20 minutes had me so like oh, tense God. and tight. My, <laughs> Mike, have you seen the trailer for his new movie that's coming out on Netflix? It's called like uh, it's wait. called like Hero or something like that. But like he's he's a uh, he's supposed to be playing as a recruiting officer for uh, for the Los Angeles basketball team. And like, like the seventy Sandler, uh, yeah, seventy six Sandler, yeah, he's Sixers. It's a really? ser- it's another serious movie that sort of okay. is in that like uncut gems sort of vibe. And like we saw the other day, we're like, this actually looks really good, dude. Like Adam Sandler mm-hmm. coming back and showing his chops again. Is yeah, because so like because for a, for a while, like, you think of Adam Sandler, like oh, he's this, he makes dumb, stupid movies. I think <laughs> what was the one with his uh with when he had to take care of a kid? Which one was that? Big Daddy, uh, Big Daddy, <laughs> Big Daddy. So Big Daddy, I thought was I thought was funny at the time. Time. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it holds up today. And also, of course, uh, Happy Gilmore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you kind of like he just like kind of got typecasted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure he was like, I mean, he made a f- fucking fortune off doing that. Oh, but uh, but I don't know. It's just like, especially after Uncut Gems, like, damn, I want to see more of that. Like, oh, that's man. Uh, he's so he was mm-hmm. really good at that. Dude, Especially watch. with KG, that dog. Oh. Fucking Kevin Garnett making his acting I debut know, is like so, it's so natural mm-hmm. too. Because like Kevin Garnett's personality, like watching him play ball through the years, I'm like, yeah, this makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, I want to see more KG. <laughs> oh my god, they 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 nailed that damn movie, dude. Yeah, definitely watch that trailer. It it looks super interesting. I'm I'm definitely gonna be mm-hmm. watching that day one, whenever the hell they drop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna be super. On scary. that Netflix news too, uh, just throwing it in real quick did you guys see the trailer for the resident evil series that they're doing no it yeah. actually looks better than the movie that came out is it is it is it is it is it, is it that hard to look that much better <laughs> let's, be like, real, let's be real let's be real yeah like, let's, let's, let's be honest it's just like, kind of sad on mila Djokovic's name yeah. <laughs> well no not I that think, movie but no. the most recent movie the like yeah, most recent the one. welcome to raccoon know. city that mm. That was the most B-rated movie I've ever seen of a AAA <laughs> property. <laughs> you know, it was a C movie. That's how B movie that was. was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn. I mean, like, I've I've heard that it's it's devilish, but I'm sure there's been worse movies like Thanks Killing or some shit. But still, like uh, <laughs> this uh, was this, it Velocipaster? Pastor? <laughs> Velocipaster? Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> that was another Mike. That was another Netflix ass movie. That was like this. It was like a it was a pastor, and he's like traveling through time and <laughs> fighting it crime. Like a dinosaur or something. Yeah, you run. You run to the, He can turn into a raptor. His superpowers. He can turn into a velociraptor. His name is Velocipaster. <laughs> You gotta watch it at least once. You gotta watch it at least oh, once. It sounds sick. Just, yeah, this... just do like a watch along or watch it with some friends or something. Yeah, it's... yeah, it's it's pretty. I know. Yeah. Devin was like, "Dog, I got super fucking ripped last night, and I watched Velocipaster, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, you did. Yeah, you fucking did." <laughs> I watched it with my roommate. It was great. Yeah, yeah. What a good movie, man. Some mm. other stuff that we're definitely gonna probably get super fucking baked and do is a Dead Space remake. It's a January 
January release date. Uh, this comes from Ash Parrish over at The Verge. In a day filled with the news of disappointing but not wholly unexpected postponements, it seems like the Dead Space remake is coming along nicely enough for the developers to commit to a release date. Today, in a developer live stream, the team at EA's Motive Studio announced the remake to 20 to 2008. Excuse me, survival horror smash hit will launch January 27th, while also showing off the work put into giving the game a fresh coat of bloody paint. The live stream dove into the technical process of rebuilding a Dead Space level from the ground up. There were lots of before and after shots of items, the updates made to Isaac's iconic spacesuit, and short clips of Isaac walking around uh, updated levels. At the end of the live stream, the team put together all the visual pillars and concepts highlighted previously in a short in-game demo. Mike, my man, are you stoked for some Dead Space remake, my dude? Uh... I am. I, at first, I, I I didn't really think Dead Space needed a remake because I think, well, uh, uh, controls aside, I just like think that game. It, it's one of those games that l- still looks current gen. Like, I don't. There's something about it that just feels still feels very modern. And I think like just like the 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 kind of like sluggish, the the horror of Dead Space is just like you feel so vulnerable because it's you're not really nimble. It, it, it harkens back to like old school resident evil in a way um kind of a spiritual yeah. successor in that regard and i think like it's held up really well because it, it it doesn't feel like uh, like i said a control side i just like feel like it's it's elements are timeless and like the way it does horror is timeless like you know you, you play like the original resident evil it's like oh this is actually i was scared as a kid but this is kind of cheesy but something about dead space is like nah you can play this anytime but, like yo this shit's kind of fucked up uh, mm-hmm. That game is fucked up. So I never really thought it needed a remaster, um, but uh, shit, we're gonna get one anyway, and uh, that, that's hey. that's that's cool. That's cool. Two thousand eight does not feel like a long time. That no, shit was fourteen like, years ago. Dog, I know. I, I, that's the year I graduated, and I'm like, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, <laughs> like that. It like feels like the time just like zoomed by. It, like doesn't yeah. feel that far, but like, yeah, like, Dead Space remake is like that's that's not that's not that old. I'm like. Yeah. Dog, there are people who were born in 2008 who are going to be playing this. Dog, I know. It's crazy to think about, dude. And, like, I mean, like, granted, I know me and Devin are super excited for it because we, we fucking loved the Dead Space games. I'm in the same boat as you, though, where, like, I didn't necessarily think it any of the Dead Space games really needed a remake myself either uh, because even going back and playing it every once in a while myself, like, it aged really well really really well and i know like devin and i we were trying to get uh garrick one of our guys here at gk we were trying to get him to uh uh to check it out and play it for the first time and we were like dude like like i know it's worrisome because it's an old game but like it controls eh, but like it aged so good as far as like a story as far as horror experience like it's yeah. such a pivotal like survival horror game that like now Absolutely. at this point i'm like sure Fuck it. Let's do it. Sign me the <laughs> hell up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm down for this. I'm wondering if they're going to sell it for the same, like, $60, $70 price point, you think? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I guess it depends on to what, what, which, what extent this yeah. is a remake. So. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I, I think it will be. I think it will be a $60 game because oh, yeah. from my understanding, the first Dead Space, a lot of the story was, like, through audio logs and stuff like that. Right. You know? Like almost kind of like how early Dark Souls games, you got all your lore and everything out of messages and stuff like that. Um, This time they're actually elaborating on the story and actually having a lot of NPCs and characters involved and reusing like Isaac's voice and stuff like that, because they did all that in Dead Space 2 and 3, you know, right? right. It it was very, very much a story based game with a lot going on. So I, I think it will still be a $60 maybe $70 game in that regard because it it's it's going to be a remake remake you right. know yeah yeah so. i yeah i guess we'll see i i know me and devin we're we're fucking here for the bag man like i'm going to get taking my damn money i'll tell you, i know that it'll be a day mm-hmm. one buy for us that's for damn sure yeah i'm look, i'm looking at the 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 gameplay that was released or yeah the the, the demonstration that was released mm-hmm. i'm like it's it's uh f- like just me taking a quick look at it. It's uh obviously like the lighting is really really good. Like obviously right. high res textures, uh it runs a lot more smoother. But like with a quick look, like damn that two thousand eight release was still like yeah that shit still looks good. And I think it also helps because like more than half that game is just pitch black. 
Yeah. So right, it right. can hide <laughs> any blemishes. It will be covered up by yeah. the darkness. Yeah. So it can like focus on like all oh, the things that you do see are really like detailed and juicy. So it's like the darkness is definitely uh, did some favors for it. Um, but yeah, this uh, I don't know. Shit, I'm pl- I'm play more Dead Space, man. I don't know. Hell, I ain't gonna complain. Need some more. Need some more alien, uh, alien fuckery about. That's what, that's what we need in our life. <laughs> dude, dude. Dis- dismemberment. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, dude, that that mechanic. That system was so just brutal in that damn game. Yep. <laughs> oh man, dude. Let's. Oh, god, we're excited, man. We're excited. We're and we hope you guys at home are excited for it too. Uh, and especially excited for our next segment here. But before we get to our next segment, I want to remind everybody that they can support us over on patreoncom slash and Show, where they can get early access to our episodes. They can write into the show. You can ask questions to the show. If you want to be part of the shipwreck show, just want to piece of our content, you can do that over on patreon.com slash good cracking show. And uh, you can also get this episode ad free. But if you're hearing this, you aren't on our Patreon. So for now, have a word from our sponsors. This piece of good cracking content is brought to you by Glide Mouse Pads. The world is changing, and the demand for PC gaming and work from home setups has never been as wild as it is right now having the best of the best in pc accessories only makes it easier to get your work done before you jump right back in to the fray of the digital sea and glide knows exactly how to make that happen for you glide mouse pads is the future industry leader in mouse pads offering beautiful smooth waterproof products made with eco-friendly materials and non-slip rubber in a variety of sizes that are guaranteed to help you get that next win I've got one of these bad boys in my office at work. I've got one here at my desk right now. Devin's got one. Xander's got one. This bad boy is silky smooth, silkier and smoothier than even the silkiest of smoothiest of smoothies or soy milk or what have you. <laughs> You can go to GlideMousePads.com right now and use code Kraken for 15% off the Founders Edition mouse pad in every size available. Again, that's code K-R-A-K-E-N, Kraken, for 15% off any Founders Edition mouse pad today. Our next sponsor is Rogue Energy. Late nights are pretty much commonplace for all content creators, and anyone here at GK can attest that late nights are kind of our only nights. <laughs> Luckily for us, though, Rogue has figured out exactly how to give those late nights and even earlier mornings the supercharge that we all need. Rogue Energy is a low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula that is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Every formula rolls energy produces is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients and no chalky textures again we don't want that we don't want that being the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand rogue energy strives to improve the in-game performance of gamers streamers and content creators around the world now i know that we've been riding this train for a long time might be tired of us talking about this you might not be tired of us you might want to just support us anyways and you know what for those that do support us we love you but the best way to support us right now is to grab yourself a big old cup of joe when i say joe i mean this rogue energy stuff i need you waking up first thing in the morning with a big old shit to get a big old shit going. <laughs> oh wow you grab your rogue energy cup Okay, you dip that bad, you just scoop that bad boy right on there. You that bad boy shaky dakey, you know what I'm saying? And then you're out the dang door. Okay, you need this beverage in your life. I cannot express that enough. You can head on over to RogueEnergy.com and use code G Kraken for 10% off any purchase of shaker or formula tub of your choosing. That's G K R A K E N for 10% off any shaker or formula tub that you would like. Now, back to the episode. I didn't heard that. What's like... happening, everybody? I know, we were, we, were, we were dweeping out about Final Fantasy coming, coming right out of the ad break. It's all good. You're all good, babe. But <laughs> one, one thing that we figured out here is that if things aren't just a little bit messy, it's not actually one of our shows. Because we, like, <laughs> we 100% always run into tech difficulties. We always run into stupid shit. We always say stupid shit. That's just kind of like like what our vibe is around here. No, nothing about here takes ourselves too damn seriously. So it's hey, okay. Devin's, Devin's currently looking up... Uh, uh, an interview talking about Final Fantasy X being a prequel to Final Fantasy VII and how that universe potentially has. Because like I know, like we've we talked a lot uh, with me and Devin about like the crystal. Um, the crystal universe of the Final Fantasy games, how some of them sort of like generally are within like a timeline of the one crystals universe. And uh, 
we, we like to put on our tinfoil hats and talk about what other universes are potentially in the Final Fantasy realm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, all three of us here are big old dweebs about Final Fantasy games. Like, we're here for it, doggy dog. Let's go. Uh, while Devin is doing that, though, Devin, could you tell the people at home what we got going on next really quick, my guy? Absolutely. We are heading over to Hands on Deck, my friends. <laughs> Uh, guys, yeah. Hands on Deck is our segment where we talk a little bit about a game or movie or show that we have each uh, been watching or playing this uh, this past week. We try to pitch them to each other. We try to pitch them to you guys at home to let you guys know about some fun stuff that you need to uh, get your hands and eyes and uh, feelers into. You know what I'm saying? Now, Mike, you are a guest for the show. What have you been playing or watching, Oof. my dude? Um, have y'all played Kirby and the Forgotten Land at all? God. Damn, I haven't, haven't yet. I played it with my daughter, dude. She loves that game, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! Talk about it, Mike. What's up? Do, do you play co? Do you play co-op with her? And you have her have no, play we, Waddle D. We haven't done co-op yet, okay. but I've kind of like just been letting her play and guiding her through like some sure. steps because she's still only six years old. So I kind of mm-hmm. like. Like I let her play, and she's like, "Oh, daddy, how how do I get past the spiral? Like, oh, you just got to jump up there." And she, "Oh, okay," and she goes into it because like having yeah. like my six year old like be like fascinated with video games is like such a like a good feeling in my heart. Like, take, take it, honey, take it. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, it looks so much fun though, dude. So much fun. It's 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 probably my it's my game of the year uh, so far, Ooh. and I'll, yeah, I like it's it's really it's really it's really dope to see kind of like the evolution of kirby because kirby has kind of always had this is like an easier game side scroller for the most part and um yeah it's kind of cute fluffy not too difficult very yeah. easy to play sure uh forgotten land is like what if we built what if we made this a 3d platformer and went fucking balls of the wall on it like but they've been they've kirby, done that with kirby a lot souls like <laughs> <laughs> well, Forgotten Land is, is still like pretty pretty easy, but sure, sure, sure. it just it has so there's so much texture to that world. There's so much going on. There's so much detail. It's uh ah damn. I don't know. Um, let me kind of maybe these these questions will help me guide because I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about Kirby. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, sure. but yeah, it's a uh, pink puffball. Y'all don't know who Kirby is. I uh, one of the icons. One of the cutest. One of the cutest, oh, in the whole wide world. I love Kirby so much. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. As the Waddleys get transformed, or gets, get, get transported to this foreign world by some rift in the universe yeah. or some shit. <laughs> and just Kirby has to save the day. Uh, and, like, possessed monsters uh, are imprisoning Waddleys across the land. <laughs> it's like this really stupid, uh, like, cute, funny kind of concept. Uh, but I think as you go on, uh, it gets more and more serious. So like you'll go through uh, the water world, and then the the amusement park world, and then like the snow land, and then you go to like this really imposing desert, and then you're in like a fucking volcano land where there's like heavy metal just like playing in each level, and it's really sick. The music, the evolution of the music, like they use a lot of the same late motifs throughout the game. And then you can hear it remixed uh, in different ways where like the snow world has like a lot of bells uh, that makes it feel like, oh, it's winter or Christmas time. Uh, the amusement park has like, of course, uh, like carnival style music. And then you go to like the volcano and it's like heavy metal remixes of the songs that you hear throughout the game. And it's just it, it kind of flips this kind of like there's this really cute melody that plays back at the hometown. And then when you hear that remixed into like into a metal track with like they have like fucking double bass pedals and distorted ass guitars. I'm like, yo, Kirby's about to pull up and fuck these motherfuckers up. (laughs) I'm just like, yo, Kirby is the most I feel like Kirby's the most badass dude in the whole world. Um, And I really love that. Right. Like low key. He's kind of the most badass fucking video game character ever, dude. He's one of the most OP characters in Smash. So, you know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> absolutely absolutely um but like that's that's kind of that's the thing for me is i always explain to people i think that the thing about kirby and forgotten land for me is seeing kirby do such extraordinary things like this this cute character that i love so much that i adore so much seeing controlling him and being the one to like save the world and fight these these incredibly and like scary monsters or like this huge uh, godlike boss or whatever and it's just kirby 
doing doing what he does and <laughs> like creepy. when kirby looks really serious and then uh when he's like waving and saying hi like oh my gosh i love kirby so much <laughs> it's so uh, good dude i know yeah the, the games that are like obnoxiously cute are always like yeah. the ones like a fucking animal crossing i just finally picked up like a few huh. days ago and I've been like, I love this so much because I just feel like such a little dork playing <laughs> this game that is so damn adorable that, like, mm -hmm. you can't get enough of it. Like, Kirby fighting yeah. this big old gorilla, dude. You're just like, no, Kirby, don't do that. Don't fight Harambe. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> like <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, deep so cut, good. deep cut. Yeah, I know, right? Rest in peace. I sticks it. out forever. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, it's just like the uh, Kirby's got his Kirby's got his dick out in this game. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> out here, fucking laying it down on everyone. But <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> just swinging, dog. Anyways, uh, fucking mouth, mouthful mode is wild, yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, but, sir. <laughs> so, like, through speaking of mouthful mode, hey, yo. Uh, it just, hey, uh, hey, man, say, man. <laughs> <laughs> it just has, like, su there's such a variety in it. Like, it's a very simple game that I think it has. So, it's um, it has a lot of different mechanics and elements to it that you're constantly doing something different. Like, yes, it's a 3D platformer, but the ways in which it challenges you and mixes things up. Uh, I think it, it, I'm always excited to play the next level and the kind of the secret objectives that you kind of have to find for yourself are pretty intuitive. There's never, you never have to like bang your head against the wall or do something like the game never asks you to do something ridiculous. Everything just feels like really well thought out, really smart level design that keeps things simple, keeps things fun. Um, and just Kirby such an, like having Kirby's copy abilities are, are is such an interesting thing to keep juggling because of the way they ask you to use copy abilities in different ways. It's just a really well-rounded game. Like I never, uh, like that game moves quick. It's like, okay, you did this cool thing, this cool thing, next level, let's challenge you this way. All right, there's a boss, you're going to fight it this way. Um, so it's just a lot of good variety that's, oh, it just stays fresh from like start to finish. And like. I, I don't know. It, it's it, it's it's it was refreshing to play something where I was constantly excited to see what's next. And mm, Kirby's really yeah. got that. I, I really think like everyone should give Kirby a try because it it nails so many things right that it doesn't matter if like you're a 3D platformer kind of guy, if you're a shooter per, a gamer, or if you're into RPGs, whatever. Like this is just a good time overall. And uh, I there's nothing really I could say negative about it. Um, like that's fucking I don't know. Good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel like maybe they uh they reuse some of the mini bosses a little too often. Um but that's fine. Uh and then <laughs> well I don't want to this game actually does have some wild spoilers and or I, I you could spoil the game. And oh, I think okay. like okay. I think I think what what's revealed at the end is kind of like this huge twist like th that you you kind of always expect kirby games to like go off the deep end and go wild like that's just the nature of kirby games like this interdimensional multiverse kind of thing where ripping rifts in time and space and shit like kirby's ridiculous like that but the way this game does it is so badass and unexpected so i don't want to i don't want to accidentally spoil it for anybody uh who might be uh who might want to play this game because it, it was genuinely it generally like filled me with excitement to see Kirby do the, these amazing things, and um, absolutely worth it, man. I, I can't I can't recommend it enough. One thousand percent, my game of the year. Hell yeah, dude! That's really exciting to hear, man. Something mm -hmm. like Kirby being someone's game of the fucking year. That's that's rad. Kirby deserves yeah. that though. Kirby's been around for ages. You know, what I'm it's saying? about like, time that he's got like a big time like. Yeah, center stage. Yeah, dude. Oh, that makes me so excited to keep playing it with my daughter then, because like I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna end up like taking it for her. Like, listen, I need, I need to, <laughs> <laughs> I need, to, I need to fight Harambe really quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Devin, what have you been playing or watching this week, my dude? So I kind of have like point two, um, or point five. You know, two of them. Sure. Um, I've been playing Switch Sports a lot, like oh, a lot okay. with my okay. roommate and friends and stuff. Um, it's been that game is so much fun. I can't wait to see like the way that they elaborate on that game. You know, I I really like to see some more like game modes and stuff like that come. But it's it's really nice having that again because it's it's very nostalgic feeling. You know, especially with like the Nintendo bowling and all that stuff. Right. I right. grew up playing that all the time. My parents keep a Wii in their like bar man cave area just to play. <laughs> 
we uh, we bullying all the time with yeah. their friends and stuff. You yeah, know, and yeah. tennis and stuff like that. So um, I've been doing that a lot, and I've been having a really good time. I think one thing I don't like about it is that you can't unlock anything unless you're playing online with people. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. so you can't like get any of the cosmetics or anything oh. like that. Huh. Um, okay. Yeah, but like you can play online with your friends and other people, you know, around the world sure. and, and do all that. Um, but uh, I've been doing that a lot and it's a fun game. Definitely recommend you getting it, Ernell, so we can do another stream here here soon. <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about it. We'll see. I'll let, I'll let you know. Hey, I'm not... Shit got serious, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it did. It did. We we did a stream and we were all, we were all on camera and standing in our rooms and playing the game. It was so fun. Yeah. yeah it, was um, a, it was a dorky, dorky piece of content <laughs> we did. The Good Crack yeah. Olympics. It was a lot of fun, which you guys can watch over at youtube.com yeah. uh, slash Good Crack and Show. Uh, yeah, and, and, and here's some Oh, you're, you oh, you're gonna you know drop in the link. Okay, all right, I got, yeah, yeah. You. I got you. I got you. Um, <laughs> Griff would be happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course. The uh, the point five is is I actually started watching Boruto. Um, finally. Oh, oh mm -hmm. shit! Okay, and I, so I I've in. been waiting right. to talk about it uh, because I I I loved Shippuden. It was one of my favorite mm -hmm. uh, anime series of all time. Uh, definitely, definitely am that guy. It was very late to the party. I didn't finish it up until about like a year, year and a half ago. Okay. And I tried watching Boruto originally, like right after and immediately fell off. I was like, Nope, Nope, not as good. Not as good. Right. <laughs> yeah. That was my, that was my first initial like impression. Well, this time I, I started watching it, you know, I stuck around and it was like, it, it was like a lot of the typical like Naruto, like filler kind of like that you, you saw in like the first series that they did because like Naruto and Naruto Shippuden are two different series essentially. Right. right, right. Um, but when it gets to like episode, like granted, it's pretty deep when you get in that like episode 55, 60 okay, range, yeah. when everything starts to pick up and you start to it starts to elaborate like on, you know, the antagonist, the opposing force, what's going on in the background with this family and this family and this character, that's it pops off. And I, I just hook right in me again. Like it, it's it's doing that stupid in thing where they're introducing like a lot of new elements, like a lot of new, like prowess, if, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you watch stupid in before it gets very extraterrestrial and oh, they're shit, yeah. capitalizing on that. Oh, with or... Boruto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit. So I, I definitely recommend it. If you were a fan of stupid in at all, Boruto definitely goes in that direction pretty fast in relative to the way that Nar naruto didn't you know mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah dude you're gonna you're gonna get me on the damn naruto train so mike he he's recently been pushing me to get back into anime after having been way out of the anime game for years oh, right that, that's your first mistake i know mm -hmm. i know it was, it was a big <laughs> dumb dumb on my part because i love i loved anime like growing up and stuff and then i was like uh -huh. going into college and i just never had time to watch it anymore so i was super out of touch for a minute but he was like dude okay you need to watch demon slayer and you need to watch attack on titan i was like all right all right all right, all right. I saw Demon Slayer and I was like, fuck, I'm in. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like Demon, Demon Slayer is really fucking good, dude. I was mm -hmm. like, I caught up on that and then I got caught up on Attack on Titan. I was like, yo, this okay. show too, dude. And so now he's like pushing me towards some stuff. I watched Bubble on Netflix on my own uh, the other week. That was a very fun movie. Um, but like, there's, there's, he, he comes up with these anime recommendations and I'm like, oh, I just need the time to watch them. I need the time to watch them, right? And Naruto is like one of the big ones that is like, I'm never going to have enough time to catch up on Naruto. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to have yeah. to just, just, just drip feed it into my life a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, so I read Naruto, um, like I, I, I tried watching it, but I think like the pace at which uh, I had access to the manga in, uh, um, in various nefarious forms, allegedly, allegedly, sure, sure. but, uh, allegedly. <laughs> um, but I just like found like, uh, well, I could read a chapter in maybe like three minutes as opposed to watching a 20 minute episode. Um, so I read, th I, I basically binged Naruto, the manga. Right. Uh, and uh, and I was like, wow, this is like, I mean, and I, I watched some of the key episodes like um, you, I, you can pull up watch lists of like, here's the fillers. Here's the key episodes to watch. So right, you can do right. that. Um, but yeah, Naruto's iconic, man. 
And so like when Boruto was first coming around, I was like, damn, really? Like, can we just, we don't, we don't have to do this. And then so, but I gave it a chance. <laughs> I gave it a chance. And then I was like, this is fine. Uh, but I don't know. But this is like, I was like, what, 20 episodes deep. So, uh, right. and then, mm-hmm. Um, and then everyone uh, like not too long ago, folks were like, "Hey, yo, Boruto is actually sick. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's picked up." And I'm like, "Oh shit, I here we go again." <laughs> yes, <laughs> yep. All right, I'm I'm back on it. And like my homie, he he was over. He was like, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm deep into Boruto. Just like I know you said you're not you're not into it, but like check this out." And it was like Naruto, Sasuke, like teaming up again. I'm like, fuck, yeah, fuck yeah, me. damn man, it, oh shit, it, it's 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 unabashedly a continuation of Shippuden. Oh, like yeah. 100%. Like, it yeah. takes a while to get there, but it does get there. And then yeah. that's when you're just like, okay, yep, I'm pulled in. I'm pulled in. This is, this <laughs> yeah, is going to be good. This is going to be good. I might, I, might yeah. need to, I might need to fuck around to find out, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, so there, is the, there is that cut that was indirectly, specifically made for you called the Ocean Cut. That's right. I heard about. It. Have yeah. you heard about this, Mike? It's this this guy made no. uh, a version of Naruto that has all the filler episodes taken out oh, okay. and only the episodes of the important shit. And uh, and that that kind of came out in like an article a while back. And Dan was like, "Yo, like that actually it actually works. It actually functions really well." So that might end up being my answer a little bit. I, 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 okay. I might fill up some mm-hmm. of my time a little bit better. You know, it's, it's even like, got your nickname in it, man. You know, it, it's, 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 it's like indirectly it. made for you. Yeah, it's made for me. I felt, I felt like like <laughs> Devin specifically cut it for you. Yeah, I had to no. <laughs> about it. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll uh, elaborate on the story behind that because okay. uh, the the creator behind behind uh, who who did all that work. It's still like 140 hours of content, by the way. Yeah, um, sure, sure. But um, the the creator who did that, he really wanted his girlfriend to watch it with him. <laughs> but so she rad. kept telling him that she didn't want to waste her time on like, quote unquote, dumb episodes. So he went through and took all the time to edit it down, like even editing the episodes themselves. Like some episodes are only like 11 minutes instead of 22 or something. Bless you know? his heart. Dude, yeah <laughs> yeah big naruto 14 hour supercut oh, yeah dude, i know 40 the, hour the snyder cut of uh naruto. <laughs> God, man, that's oh, that's man. that's sick I, I got i gotta find that because uh mm-hmm. yeah there's i only watch like some of the iconic uh fights um obviously like pain the pain arc oh, um the, so good the tune in exams, uh, mm-hmm. like just like moments like that where I saw in the manga, I was like, oh, I want to see what this is like animated. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the, best, the best part of that transition, right? Going from the guy versing to the, to the Madra. End. Oh man, I can't wait to know what yeah. you guys are talking about. It's gonna be so much it's funny. It's <laughs> iconic, man. Naruto is it. forever. Oh, I love it, dude. Well, in the meantime, I uh, this past week I started picking up a uh, very. Um, uh, uh, frustratingly fun game called Ghost Runner uh, that that had come out a little while back. Um, this game this game hurts my feelings, guys, because this game <laughs> real real fucking hard. This game yeah. this game's been making me a little bit miserable in like all the right ways, but it's scra- it's scratching this like. Cause I'm, I'm a dark souls fan. I'm a soul, I'm a souls guy. Um, and it's scratching this itch of, uh, of, of very, um, get good style gaming <laughs> that has been forcing me to, uh, to, to get through it. And so I, I picked this up just sort of like on a whim the other night. I was like, you know what? Like I've heard about this game. I've heard it's difficult. I've heard it's really, really cool looking. Um, let me finally give it a shot. And, uh, this being a sort of like F P S ish sort of thing because it's it's not a shooter it's more of a uh more of a slasher right so it's like the the mechanics of the game are really really cool because it's super smooth it's very very fast paced you're you're essentially effectively a cyberpunk ninja and it is like one of the coolest concepts where you can do this like dope like like quick like dodge things side to side and back and forth and you can slow down time for a second for you to be able to kind of like better position yourself so you don't get killed because getting killed in this game is super easy because you only get one shot uh Mm -hmm. so there is no health bar there is no you know like oh you can take a couple of hits like you get hit by anything once you're done and you have to start over from you know that last check uh check mark that you got to um checkpoint excuse me and it gets super infuri- infuriating sometimes because it plays that sort of like old school video game way where it's like 
you die by something that is seemingly just just the most ridiculous bullshit on the planet and so you're like seconds away from uh from being able to just chuck your controller if you were like 14 years old still and you're just like oh, i hate this and uh, <laughs> that's kind of like what this game was for me going into it. i was like oh man i haven't gotten like toxic about a video game like by myself <laughs> in a long time and like god you fucking suck asshole like it's just like not like giving myself that poor dialogue um but I've, I've been getting i've been getting better at because i'm starting to get used to some mechanics though but it's it's i think it's a really really cool game and it's a very fun game and i think that like if anybody who likes a challenging video game experience should definitely check it out uh i got it on sale for like a less than 11 bucks it was like 1078 or some shit like that um it's it's a super fun experience for anybody who like wants something like that. I will say it's not necessarily the best game for anybody though. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that just want that easier experience to go go to their. They don't want like Xander, one of one of our guys here. He he lit, he purposefully says i i feel enough pain in real life i don't want to play it when i play video games right like <laughs> so like like this game would not be for somebody like him uh for someone like me is a little bit more masochistic about my gaming um I, I think I think it's very fulfilling because every time that you get through that challenge through that that next thing you have this breath of like release that kind of like this weight off your shoulders for a second you're like Oh, that feels so good. And then you're just like, all right, here we go again. And he's like, yeah. go to the next fucking thing. Um, but it is really dope looking because playing a cyberpunk ninja is like one of the coolest things that we could have ever thought. Like when we were kids, like, yeah, I want to be a robot ninja. Like that's one of the dopest fucking concepts ever. And you're literally just like, you're sprinting on walls and you're like jumping at people in slow motion, like cutting people in half and shit. Yeah. It's really, really cool. I haven't dived into the story enough to really like tell anybody like what the story is potentially about. I do know so far that the ghost runners um, are like a group of like cyber cyber assassins that were like going around and you're kind of the last one left, the one that you're playing as. Um, and there's a like woman who's effectively like a woman version of Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man uh, is sort of like the main antagonist in this game. Uh, she's called the key keeper, or the key maker or something like that. And you're trying to hunt her down because she's like trying to like destroy the entire one. This is like a super matrix ish, like cyberpunk type of world. Mm -hmm. um, and you're kind of trying to chase her down to like stop her from doing something that we don't know what the hell she's trying to do yet. But uh, with that said, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. I think, I think it's worth checking out if you want a challenging game, if you want something to kind of like, you know, grind your teeth about a little bit. Um, because in the meantime, when I'm like not getting frustrated with this, I've been playing Pokemon or let's go Pikachu. It's, uh, it's been my like off time game. Like, Oh, Wait what up. a real frustrated about Ghost Rider. I was going to play, <laughs> <laughs> go pet Pikachu for a little bit. That's, <laughs> no. it's, it's all, it's all about balance. Balance. Like all things should be as Thanos said. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a good time. I like it. It's, the, it's been fun. The gameplay looks very similar to like mirror's edge. And stuff yeah. Like that. It's, it's yeah. like, it's like mirror's edge. And, uh, 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 we, we were just talking about it earlier, the arcane game, uh, Dishonored. It's like Mirror's yeah. Edge and Dishonored sort of like s smashed together into one, uh, except like you can die in a second. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's been, it's been interesting. And I, I didn't play a whole lot of Mirror's Edge. So like, I think like coming out of that is kind of like why I was having so much con like trouble with like the controls at first. Cause I was like, this is so not familiar to me. And like, it had been years since like I even played played mirror's edge at all right so it's like i was so not used to that very fast paced first person like movement and stuff and it was very disorienting at first but i'm, start, I'm starting to get a hang of it uh definitely we're playing it's a super cheap buy guys like if, if you want a cool like fun ten dollar game definitely go check that out i, I would say uh morbid in chat is going to pet your pikachu in innuendo uh you know morbid it could be it could be uh <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. More more about it. Also, more but thank you for the subscription. We, we appreciate you, dog. We appreciate you, dog. Devin, what do we have next, dude? Well, you better protect your neck because we're moving into the gallows. Oh, protect your neck. Guys, mm -hmm. the gallows today. We are talking all 
things. Michael, I am my dude. We're doing it. We're doing the thing. Let's get to know you. Let's talk, baby boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> let's uh, let's 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 do the thing. Firstly, we want to get to know you. We want to talk a little about you and your history and like what you're doing, what you're up to. What mm-hmm. what is what is the life of Mike really really about these days? Um, I want to start out just by asking you a simple question. You are a effectively a journalist. And that has been your career for a while now. Why did you choose that route? What what had you choosing journalism in the first place? Oh shit! I kind of just um, I don't know. It's uh, it, it it just you kind of fall down this rabbit hole where uh, my f- after college, my first job was I was actually covering politics. Um, I had an internship, a journalism internship. And I'm like, I'm I'm a good writer. Like people always told me, it's like, oh, I'm a good writer. It's like, oh, psh, I guess I don't know if y'all are just gassing me up, uh, but. Uh, I found a lot. I find a lot of satisfaction in getting like getting things off my chest, and I'm not always the best in like covering all the details, like speaking. Sure. Uh, so uh, if I could just like get all my thoughts down on on paper or type it all out and put that out into the world, cool. That's actually pretty satisfying. Then it's like turns out you can make money doing that. I'm like, oh shit! I used to labor over essays in college all the time and being very picky and choosy about each word and shit and then just like fuck dog like um and then the final product i would look at i'm like damn i was like spitting fire uh, on that on that paper (laughs) um and so i found a lot of satisfaction in doing that and then it turned into a career and uh so i was covering politics uh i was um doing a lot of coming up with uh campaign materials and managing campaigns back home in san diego uh, then I was an editor at a defense contractor, uh, and then I got a job at GameSpot, uh, initially covering tech. <laughs> As a, so uh, at my at my job with uh, with the defense contracting, I was editing engineering documentation. But on my other monitor, I was watching GameSpot and Giant Bomb videos, and I was nice. like, "Damn, I really I want, I want to kick it with these people. Like they seem so dope. Wouldn't it be dope to get into games?" <laughs> and I saw a, a tweet for. Um, an opening at GameSpot. It was a contractor position, though. So it's kind of like, damn, I got to move to San Francisco and not be paid a lot. Definitely well below what people should be being should be paid to live in the Bay Area. Because if you yeah. don't know, Bay Area is like the most expensive city in the United States. Right. Uh, right. Or San Francisco proper is right there. That and New York are the same level of, in terms of how expensive yeah. it is to live here. Yeah. So it was tough. But I think that now where I'm at with Fanbyte and like having done five years at GameSpot, I thought about this too, is that once you once you go on a career trajectory, it's kind of like you should, if you want to like a, a, advance and keep building that career, you kind of have to stick with it. Uh, so that's that's why um, I've stuck around. But when you think of games journalism, there's some there's a it's more about it's more like I usually like to call it games media because you do multiple things. So, for example, like I was when I was with GameSpot, I was also an on camera video host. Um, and now I do like now I cover Final Fantasy 14 almost exclusively. I also run the news part of that. I am also a guides writer. I'm also a features writer and I'm also um you know, a manager, an editor. So it's kind of all of these different things that I've learned over the years are now being channeled all into one job, specifically to cover Final Fantasy XIV. Um, And then I was like, oh, damn, I'm actually really good at this. So why, like, why would I change directions now? Um, And so, because you you try and look at other, like a career change or like, and people do this a lot. But for me, I'm kind of like, damn, if I, you kind of have to start over again. If you want to do a career change, and for me, it's kind of like, well, I'm too far down this path now, so I got, yeah, I got to right, stick with it. Right, right. Yeah, and like, you can get burnt out on uh, doing it. I've been doing it for um, about ten years at this point, uh, in terms of being in media, and I don't know. I think I feel like media is you. It's easy to burn yourself out because you always feel like you can do more or you can do better. Um, and sometimes the news cycle is just, it's, it's more than you can handle, but you always think that you can handle it when you really, you should, you can't. It's like, I remember working in politics of doing like late nights and, um, just responding to every email, uh, covering every little thing that happens, especially during election seasons where everything's a story. And I really ran myself into the ground because I was young and I was like, yo, this is what I have to do. Um, 
maybe it was for the better, maybe it wasn't. I don't know, but that's kind of the mentality that I had. I think a lot of people have, especially when they're young, and young folks who come to the games media that I feel like people tend to burn themselves out because they feel like they have something to prove. Um, but for me, it's kind of like I've done that. I've been through that already. I put in that work. Uh, I have a lot more confidence in like what I write, but also how I handle things uh, in terms of understanding like what's a story, what's not, how should the story be told um, and kind of guiding other people to learn what I learned uh, when I was when I was coming up in the industry. So, uh, but yeah, too far gone. Uh, it's yeah. been ten years, so I was like, eh, I can't really can't really change careers now, but yeah, it's it's right. fine because like there's there's a lot to love about it. It's a lot of work, but there's a lot to love. It also it also feels like you kind of like found a little bit of like a happy medium between like something that you were you know originally stressed out about a little bit and something that you're very passionate about. You kind of just found a way to combine those two things that they just ultimately make you happy. I'm assuming that's kind of like the route you ended up kind of directing yourself towards. Yeah. And I think the 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 biggest part for me is the social aspect, because I think this back. Oh, I, I, I have a lot of love for the people I grew up with. And then yeah. after high school, I was like, damn, will I ever be able to capture that magic again? Because like in, growing up in, in my neighborhood, like there's like a lot of culture. There's a lot of uh, like I grew up around like Filipinos and Mexicans and black folks. And it's just like this really vibrant community of so many different cultures like throughout uh middle school and high school that i was kind of like and end up but high school was like the thing that brought us all together and so i learned a lot uh i'm basically like very much the same person i was in high school because i had the the people i grew up with had that effect on me but it was kind of like that bond of having oh th these are my people this is the people I, I i i go to school with this is we run these streets and all this other shit uh and i was like wow will i ever have that magic again because like working in politics is just like uh, it was interesting to like move in those circles, but I didn't really find joy in the connections that I made in the world of politics. Uh, like there were some cool pe people, but a lot of that shit is fake for and like that's just that's just the way it is. So when I came to GameSpot, it was like, oh, I'm around a lot of people that I genuinely want to be around. Um, it's like I wasn't like forced to I, like forced to like who my coworkers because I already liked them. I was like um there's like a really strong bond between us and it's like oh okay cool like has my workplace has the magic that i was looking for uh this whole time and like i want to i want to stick with that like i found the thing that i can kind of hang my hat on and be be happy with like i don't hey. need to look anywhere else um but at the same time it's like you need to also have balance you can't put 1000 percent of yourself into your work um Otherwise, you're going to start hating it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I've, I've been there. I've been there before. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's um, being in, in the games industry, like it's it's frustrating a lot of times, especially with like a lot of the discourse that happens. But I think overall, the the bonds and connections that I've made are the most satisfying part. And I think that's uh, made that alone has made it worth it. Hell yeah, mm. dude. Hell yeah, dude. Do you got anything for him? Go, go yeah, for yeah. Um, you know, obviously, like before the show, we were talking about you know like things that we we want to do and stuff like that. What was it like being uh, the face of Gamespot on like E3 and hanging out with everybody? Because uh, I, yeah. I thought that was cool when we, I saw that you were announced for that. I was like, yo, dog. We, right. we we live <laughs> reacted to E3 that like this past Lord? year. <laughs> yeah, we we did a live reaction for like effectively the entire thing, and we we were like, oh, dude, let's go. And, like see, <laughs> seeing you as like a part of that stuff, uh, we were like, boy, it's Mike. Like we were so stoked, dude. What what was oh. it like? What was it like? How was it? Uh, it it's it's wild. It's humbling uh, in a way where. Mm -hmm. You, you, I kind of at least bounce back and forth between the thought of like, yeah, I'm here for a reason. I does this. I'm on the same level as all these other yeah. folks right here. Like I'm doing it big. And also at the same time, like the flip of a switch would be like, wow, I, I really don't belong here. Like I'm like the small, I'm the small time. I'm the, like the, these fools are too big. Like I can't, I can't fuck with them like that. Um, but once you get like after our first rehearsal, uh, once we started to like get a vibe for each other, and uh, once the once the live show started rolling, and we were just like throwing things back and forth, kicking it in the green room, watching all the conferences and stuff, I really felt like uh, the cool thing was that everyone in that uh, that was involved in that production, all the hosts, including me, were just quickly on the same page. Like we were like, oh shit, I would the next day I come in, uh, I see Golden Boy, I was like, oh shit, that's the homie, like. 
um what up alex like what's going on today what we're what we're what we're what are we doing what's the schedule like it's just um being able to to operate on that level and i feel like all the things that i've learned at GameSpot leading up to that moment was just like really prepared me where i'm just like this is this is this is i've been doing this it's just the scale is bigger the production is a lot bigger because you go into that studio it's like lights and moving cameras and right. uh all this wild stuff and like a whole production staff with and everyone like counting down it's like all right we're live in 10 seconds 10 9 i'm like oh shit oh shit all right all right um <laughs> it, just, it feels it feels very uh like a tv studio production and that being a part of that was a really cool experience but um like to represent game Spot was really cool because um like i got a lot of love for what we did at game spot and just like so to kind of put that love forward and then like i'm a very uh I'm the type of person who li- likes to give credit when credit is due. So when yeah. we had a showcase for E3 during that thing, uh, my boy Tamar Hussein was the one hosting that and put that and Tamar, folks put that together. Go. So when, when that played and then we we're like live reacting uh, on stage for for our hosting stuff. And I was like, hey, big shout out to my boy Tam. We we put in work. They put in work to do that. I'm, I'm like just putting putting my folks on. Uh, for that and i was like uh when we signed out like uh or we were also talking about like the like there's a filipino cooking game and i was like yo we all need to pay attention to this and it's kind of and i I look back on i'm like i'm like for me you would not get that kind of uh reaction that kind of coverage that kind of hosting with anyone else so when i look back i'm like yeah I, i i left i felt like i really had to leave my stamp leave my mark because i have this opportunity and i may never have this opportunity again um so you know uh some things were rusty but like being able to want be the one who's like hey i'm here to represent GameSpot. let me show you that GameSpot is about that life we're about that culture uh we're different folks uh and um like we care about games in ways that you won't get anywhere else and it really felt good to because i believed in that i, I believe in that stuff so yeah sure. uh, to be able to be the one to put that <laughs> for and like oh this is a layup uh let's go hell yeah mm-hmm. dog. it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of like a form of imposter syndrome at first, right? You know, like you, like you were saying, it's like you're like, I'm here. I made it here, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I should be here. I, I, I can empathize with that in a sense. You always it's between the two, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because like uh, before the pandemic, I like started touring and stuff like that, playing music and stuff. And like, it's like, oh, I really like that band. The, I've been listening to them my whole life. Um, okay, I'm here. I'm here. This is cool. Yeah. This yeah. is cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I know that feeling one hundred percent, and it's it's like, it's it's you're always your worst critic, right? Absolutely, you know? yeah. You know, but like in hindsight, I can say, um, you know, granted, it's been a year now. You did a good job. So, oh shit, thanks. Yeah, you yeah. killed it. Yeah. You killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank All you. y'all killed it. Actually, it was it was a mm-hmm. really really good hosting group that you guys had going on there. Absolutely, like, yeah. Really, like, this you guys made it way more fun. So damn yeah. fun. Yeah, I, I think about like what we had to work with too. Uh, like there was like the Xbox showcase was exciting. Um, some of the Square Enix stuff was was well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was there was there were things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'll sure. get that much. But sometimes there just wasn't much to talk about. And we kind of had to like, damn dog, like how are we gonna do this? Um, and I think that um, especially folks like like Greg Miller, like when you when you work with Greg Miller, you realize like how good he actually is at his yeah. job. Yeah. Um, it's one thing to see him like being loud and uh, he has such a like a big personality that you see on camera. But when you're working with him. Uh, you feed off that energy, but he's also like he like makes sh- he his presence makes you uh, com- comfortable. So when he like throws sure. questions to me and he's playing off of me, uh, I'm just like, oh shit, yeah, that's that's the homie Greg Miller. Like, okay, I'm I'm comfortable, I'm cool. Let, let right, let's right. have a back and forth here. Mm-hmm. So it makes it very natural. And the same thing for for Golden Boy, um, uh, he's just like a really cool dude. He's like one of the funniest dudes genuinely funniest dudes i've ever worked with like everything everything that fool said was like hella funny he's always joking around it really put me at ease too because like for me i'm like oh shit yo yo golden boy alex mendez like that dude is that dude's out here he's like a professional professional host legend dude yeah yeah he's yeah he's like uh he's a legend in the esports scene and then but to like work with him was like Oh, but this is the homie, though. Like, yeah, Alex is the type of dude that I, I like. I feel like I knew him since high school. When I met him, I was like, oh, you're exactly like my homies back home. So day one, I was like, OK, I vibe with Alex 1000 uh, percent. And like Jackie Jing is just like a, she's a professional, like 
uh, through and through. It's just really like well prepared and uh, everything. She she just has everything down pat, and it's just like to be able to work with someone who's just professional on that level. Like, oh shit, I see how all y'all work. Everyone works differently, and it's just like constantly thinking like gaining all this knowledge like oh i see how you're working i see how you do this i see how i vibe with you and it's just like taking all this knowledge and experience like wow this is this almost feels like a yeah it was e3 but for me it felt like a professional workshop (laughs) in a way yeah right right and i I think yeah and i think if you're in games media you need to like those opportunities are all learning experiences uh and you need to you need to be like really reflective about your experiences so you can grow and do these things a little bit more you know better rest, i guess dude. Rad, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta rest. that's that's it absolutely man. take those opportunities and win some from them with uh with kind of coming off of that though like let's talk a little bit about the culture really quick because i know that's like mm-hmm. like the big thing you and i clicked on originally is like the this this uprising of filipino culture in the games industry oh man. yeah <laughs> like we're we're seeing we're seeing it happen like we're seeing it happen in full effect man like 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 it's it's been wild and crazy to see it and it's been so dope seeing that representation be a reflection in the industry that we love and cherish so damn much. Um, What I want to ask you is like, you've been in this industry for a long time. You've been kicking it. You've been doing the thing, you know, Um, and us as Filipinos working in games and, and talking about this media and like this, this, this medium that we love so, so much. Obviously Filipinos kind of haven't been on the forefront of conversation, in the games industry basically Mm -hmm. ever really until kind of relatively recently. Um, What I want to ask you is like, do you, do you feel like there's anything that you want to see the games industry do to help better push the Filipino culture up more, put us in the spotlight and and kind of get us to where we want to be, especially being Filipino Americans now, like where we want to go with that. How, how do you want to see the games industry take better care of us? Um, uh, that, that that that's um like that's a tricky question uh, mm-hmm. because uh or well how do i say this uh i'm seeing at least for us as filipino americans i'm seeing a lot of great progress in terms of like having our stamp in the industry and i think yeah. it's uh, it's a credit to a lot of the a lot of the people actually like a lot of my people i know so for one like in games media there's actually like a lot of filipinos uh working in the background so like me uh jano cho at giant bomb mm-hmm. um my boy matt espinelli who used to be the guides editor for for GameSpot. uh he's moved on to other things but he was really like behind the scenes making things happen our eic randy uh ramsey is also a filipino australian um and he's still there so like there's a lot and like chastity vicencio who's like one of my best friends uh, she's like the front and center. She's at IGN and then at GameSpot yeah. and now at Ubisoft. She's like yeah. front and center, a host. She's going to be doing a Star Wars celebration in a couple weeks. She's going to be hosting that. Hell yeah, um, dude. And Sydney Goodman, who's uh, who's with IGN. Uh, I linked up with her when she was with IGN and then uh, at least, uh, you know, uh, cross paths with her and then like kind of seeing her like do big things. She left IGN and now she's like a professional, professional host. She's yeah. doing the, the Halo uh, series, the official uh, after show for the Halo series. She's doing big things out there. It's just like, we're out here. Like folks yeah. is out here. We're doing yeah. our thing. Uh, and so I feel like there's, mm-hmm. I actually feel like there's a lot of good Filipino representation already. And then when you come to games where um, you have characters like uh, Neon, who's in Valorant, who was yes, uh, I recently I recently did an interview with the the developers on that and I'm going to have a story soon on that. Hey. And I talked to Vanille Velasquez who's uh she's um the voice actress for Neon. Um and then like the the Riot developers and how they created an authentically Filipino character uh because of the people who were involved with that the artists and then like the actual designer uh who put who made her character and uh, and folks like my homegirl Belinda Garcia, who's now a narrative designer at Sledgehammer. Belinda, got, yes. No, Belinda's the homegirl, obviously. And then, but she's like, she's a narrative designer for. Is that wild, for dude? Sledgehammer. That's, That's fucking so wild. That's like, fucking dope. Yeah, but it's but I, I when I when I see her like make her progress through the years, I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense though. Like. I always see it and, and I'm just like, oh yeah, that's, she definitely deserves like that, that trajectory. And she uh, wrote one of the, like the um, uh, Call of Duty characters for, for Vanguard. Yeah. Um, one of the multiplayer characters. Um, I mean, it's not like a full fledged story, but right. uh, it was because like doing big part of her work with Call of Duty that there's a Filipino character in 
Call of Duty Vanguard, who has that background of like, oh, here's a piece of, you know, that can represent how Filipinos were a big part of World War II in this World War II game. Um, and just like seeing like the little nods and iconography in those characters is is really cool. And shouts out to Gwen Foster, who's um, working on, who also was part of the Filipino cooking game that um, I talked about at E3. Yeah. I feel like there's just like a lot of good pieces that uh, maybe we could do a, a, a better job of like elevating those things uh, and highlighting. It's like, hey, we are out here. Um, of course, we want to see uh, see that more often, but I think we're actually in a really good place. Um, Probably better than it's ever been, honestly. Uh, it's, it's been incredible to see the come ups coming from our, you know, our family and our culture and the people around us that we care about that you know come from our little islands off of Southeast yeah. Asia, man. <laughs> like it's it's been it's been dope to see it, dude. And like I, yeah, dude, following me Belinda all this time, I've been just shocked i'm just like oh dude you've been working so hard and you deserve this you deserve this so yeah. much dude good for her if you're if you're watching yeah. which i know you are belinda if you're watching this congratulations <laughs> to you <laughs> yeah it's like yeah i'm just like really proud of like everyone who's kind of and there's there's probably people i'm forgetting right now or leaving their mark um and in there and you know putting ourselves on the map when we can yeah uh, but also just like being out here doing doing the work that everyone else does too so uh, yeah, I just I feel like we're in a, we're we're in a good place. I'm really happy with uh, a lot of the a lot of a lot of us who are out here uh, who are also putting on uh, for our people. But uh, another thing too, I think it's also as Filipinos in, in this industry, it's also our duty to uplift others too. Like, yeah. it can't, the, the come up can't just be about us. It's like, hey, if we're on the come up, come along with us. Let us also support you. So like, uh, having a lot more Black folks in in the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. and then, yes, um, sir. Yeah, and also like Latino representation, also being more, uh, being better over the years, uh, and uh, so there's like a lot of there's a lot of elements that uh, that go into what it feels like to be uh, someone different in the industry. It's like you know we we can all elevate each other in some way. When we come up, we don't want to be like, hey, we're we're up here, like we're doing good. Uh, yeah, it's like, right, right. Let's let's help others uh, do that too. And I think like folks are really good about that. I think we've seen at least an uh, at least progress in the industry to be more open to those ideas, um, rather than like you can't get away with like other folks can't get away with shutting other people out anymore. Yeah, um, like that doesn't fly. You're, you're gonna get you're gonna get your ass roasted. Yep. You're gonna get caught mm -hmm. up. Yes, um, sir. Of course, like <laughs> you see things like the the <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw the Blizzard uh, diversity calculator thing. Um, <sighs> You see, <laughs> and you, so you see shit like that, and you're like, yeah. "Wow, maybe we haven't made uh, any progress at all." Yeah, um, yeah. And then there are moments like that where you kind of wrestle with, like, "Damn, have we made much progress?" I think we have, but there are ways in which <laughs> there's different lanes, different aspects to it, right? There's like, yeah. "We've made progress here, but maybe not as much in this realm." Or yeah, sure. With characters, with how um, w people in the games industry are treated by companies or whatever being in positions of power where we can make decisions for ourselves rather than just being like a quota to fill, you know, there it's so dynamic. There's so many nuances and elements to it, uh, that you could talk about it for days and days. Uh, but, uh, overall I'm feeling, feeling good about the progress and the trajectory of, uh, our people, but also, uh, other people as well. Yeah. I think, I think you're spot on because it's like, you know, and we've talked about this before, like specifically Filipino culture in the, you know, API spectrum and like where we sort of fit in that place. Like a lot of our culture is Spanish. Right. And like, we talked about how that, that connection between the two, like we have such a cultural reflection that is so similar to Hispanic cultures and Mexican mm -hmm. culture and Southern American culture. And we sort of share that realm. And then we also share so many cultures between like my mother being half Hawaiian and like, like, you know, yeah, like island yeah. cultures. And we're sort of this brood, like, like <laughs> cross between these multiple different things. Yeah. And because of such, it's easy for us to relate with so many other cultures. And I know like, just like you, like I, I kicked it in high school with so many homeboys, like across so many different cultures, so many different ethnicities and backgrounds. And like, it was nice. It was good to have that and like, feel like, you know, we're all in this realm. That's like, we're not just individual ethnicities anymore. We're not just like, it's, it's us against them. You know, it's us against the entire world when it comes to like, like us, we are people with melanin in our skin. 
And that's like what mm-hmm. matters. And like, well, now we're, we're trying to like find our place and like with the things that we love and seeing the games industry sort of like move towards better representing all of our cultures has been yep. phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. even like with us and our team here, it's like, Devin and I, we click because Devin being mixed indigenous, American indigenous man. And then we have Genesee, who is gay. And we have Garrick, who is uh, he's he's basically deaf, just like I am. So we, we have we have hearing troubles and like Xander, he's uh, he's half Thai. And like we we have such a big, diverse like team here that we're like constantly trying to like say like we're here like we exist yeah. and like like it, we all love video games we love we're passionate about being dweebs and nerds and like <laughs> loving the things that we love and it's it's cool that like like what a better time for us to be able to talk about those things you know yeah. what i mean because now it's like we're actually seeing the progress that we're making and all of our different backgrounds and how dope that has been it's been yeah. phenomenal, dude. I, I think you were spot on with that. Um, yeah. Real quick before we do one last uh, good question, probably from Devin, we can close out with you, dog. Uh, Morbid in chat wants to know, um, uh, <laughs> were you able to complete the tutorial level of Cuphead? <laughs> wow. I finished Cuphead. I beat Cuphead. <laughs> you beat Cuphead. It's, All right, there you, yeah, I'm, there you go. There you go. There you go. It's It's a very tough game, but... Uh, to that point, though, I think that, that like, yeah, it's, it's funny to poke fun at that. Um that's a really rare specific case that I kind of <laughs> I know the background of what happened and how that happened and how that was a, how that even came about but yeah. um like the whole like oh game journalists like play on easy mode it's like no we're out here we're we're playing yeah. games the same way y'all are and if anything a, um, a big part of the job is like you you don't have to know everything or you don't have to be like the best at everything but you have to be competent in everything right so it's like how are you gonna cover it if you weren't right yeah like i can beat a souls game i also play competitive shooters Mm -hmm. uh i'm uh, obviously i do high level rating in final fantasy 14 so like playing jrpgs and like all sort of shit like i don't think folks really realize like people in the games industry how vast their skill set is when it comes to just gaming itself Right. Mm-hmm. Writing and editing and video hosting and video production, that's a whole nother skill set, but also just the uh just like the the ability to uh keep track of like the history, the lineage of all these different games and how to play them well, uh, I think gets uh kind of overlooked mm-hmm. uh in many regards. Like yeah. we yeah. out here, we like if we wouldn't be in these in these have these jobs if we weren't like mm-hmm. really if we didn't play games the same way everyone else does. So, well, and uh, dude, and so. dude, like we, when we started getting review codes, like we really like started feeling that because like, I, like, I remember we got, we got our first two review codes that were given to us and Lord bless those companies. Thank you so much for giving us that opportunity. Uh, cool, uh, it was like jumping into it. We were like, holy shit, like, we have to beat these games. <laughs> like, and so it was, like, yeah. this thing where it was, like, tr- like transitioning, like, our mindset towards, like, oh, I can casually play this game or whatnot or to, like, oh, I don't have a time limit for this, right? Like, I, I have to nail this out. You can't do that if you're not competent in, like, being a gamer, right? So it's, yeah. like, 100%, dude. And really, I wanted to bring that, that question to you to kind of, like, have have that conversation with people at home like say like journalists aren't just like journalists like they're not just writers like they're they're like especially in your industry specifically and like your space specifically you have to be able to be a gamer and a writer and balance those things together and also yeah. be a reviewer and be a content creator and do all these things yeah. that are like multifaceted um that's it's incredible to think about and like we we admire the amount of work that it takes you journalists to have to fucking like go through that process like we we see like obviously there's like the podcast realm of things right we see like bless for example who who is constantly being barraged with like review content that he has to do yeah he couldn't do those things <laughs> he wasn't good at video games dude and it's exactly, like yeah wild to think about like like that that comprehension of that but you know like audiences at home and stuff obviously they're they have a different like viewing of how that perception is right like they're seeing Mm -hmm. it from ground level and i want to make sure that people you know that listen to this get that idea that's like it's not what you think it is dude like it's stressful it's stressful as fuck and like you got you guys have to remember that you know what i mean so thank you like we yeah yeah we we love doing it too like we wouldn't we wouldn't be in the uh in games media if we didn't love it like 
like it's, it's it's kind of the same thing with uh any content creator like mm -hmm. content creators like to be successful it takes a lot of work but you put in the work because you enjoy it so for mm -hmm. us it's i don't think a any of us in games media are like boohoo look at us and how yeah, hard that. it is fuck like yeah. no like that's not what we're trying to say what we're trying to say is like is that this stuff genuinely takes work yeah. and we just want people to respect the fact that we are working on this stuff um it is a so, job. It is a yeah. job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, not, we're not crying about it. We're like, we are genuinely enjoying it. We're just saying, like, yo, understand that this is genuinely we have to. We're putting in that work uh, mm -hmm. to like make these things happen. So, um, but yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Fuck yeah, dude. Devin, mm -hmm. you got one last question for us. For you roll yeah, out of here? Uh, yeah. We we know that uh, you have an interview coming up here soon that you're going to be releasing. Um, do you have any like cool big things that you're going to be covering anytime soon that you can talk about uh, at this moment? Oh yeah, sure. Um, mm. Mostly Final Fantasy XIV stuff, like I said. Uh, yeah. that, that is <laughs> that's what I, that is primarily what I do now. Of course. Uh, but mm. yeah, I have uh, some cool things cooking up. Uh, you can check out the the site at thelinkshell.com um, for all of our. Uh, it's like the fanbite offshoot for uh, all all the Final Fantasy XIV coverage, which I lead. Yes, but sir. yeah, uh, so. I'm, I'm working on a story about the creation of Neon from Valorant, um, basically focusing on like, hey, this is how we have a genuinely the first like genuinely Filipino character in a video game and how mm -hmm. that was made and how that was made correctly, I guess, for lack of a better term. Yeah, sure. Um I also have a like a short uh, interview feature with um, I don't know if you're deep into Final Fantasy 14 you know what an what an ultimate raid is yeah uh, and yeah. a world race and a world first uh, so I have a little piece talking to like the the, the players who um, who actually claimed the the world first for the latest ultimate raid which is a lot of fucking work um, it is it's more about like the human element of it like how do you set aside a whole week to just play this game nonstop in hopes of actually finishing this piece of content God damn. Um, and, right. yeah, and f <laughs> folks are like i set aside time i take time off i tell my family and friends a for the next seven days i'm gonna be focused on this thing uh people are like yo i do like exercises i eat well beforehand it's like pre preparing for like a big sporting event or some shit uh, and i think it's really interesting um because people watch a world like watch people raid and don't really understand maybe you don't understand how much uh it costs to to pull that thing off so it's mm -hmm. there's just like so many interesting aspects to the 14 world that i'm um constantly trying to cover so but yeah we got a lot of stuff going on there it's big man yeah you got, yeah. A, lot of, you got a lot of work you're constantly worrying about dude i can imagine <laughs> Yeah, I used to be a big raider in Destiny, so oh, yeah. I can you know with that. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially like, <laughs> yeah, doing doing raids day one where there's yeah. no there's no guides. It's like, Just hey, we're gonna all day. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing Vault of Glass day one with my homies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back damn, in, that's Destiny one, and it's like I played WoW uh, before, so I kind of understand like what rating like what you have to do with rating, but right. uh, just like trying to figure out like yo this fucking Eye of Gorgon, like how do we we gotta stealth this? Can we fight it? It's like, oh, maybe two people can take it. like this jumping puzzle. Like, oh shit! Like, how do you? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's that that process is so fun, and it can also be very tedious. Yeah, um, you have to have a level of dedication uh, to go through that stuff, and I, you really need the right people to do it with it also because mm -hmm. that shit can be like not fun real quick. <laughs> are you? Yeah. Uh, are you? Are you still? Are you still raiding in, in Final Fantasy fourteen? Like are you still like pretty actively doing raids and stuff or like Oh yeah, like when when the yeah. when they come out, uh I I have to, I do them because like I should know about yeah, this. Yeah, right, stuff. sure, it's, sure, it's, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do guides for a, a a lot of content uh for the game too. So it's like, well, um I keep in the loop in it. Yeah, I, yeah, I have for to, sure. I have to mm -hmm. yeah. Debbie, but, you were gonna say something. Sorry, I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Um honestly. <laughs> oh sure okay oh, no, that's, fine. that's fine that's fine mike dude thank you so much for hanging out with us man we appreciate you we appreciate you every time that you're here dog it's it's good to have you it's good to have a have a filipino brother out there like you know putting in the hey. work i see the flag in the background you're representing uh, out here doing uh, the moves for us down here on the film life dog i see you i see you dog. we we appreciate you thank you so much for coming and hanging yeah. out with us today dude uh guys let's go ahead and talk about our schedule real quick next week uh tuesday another good cracking podcast we're doing evil dead the game review it's going to be a very fun conversation we streamed it last night i'll be up later on tonight for you guys to see we'll be talking about the mechanics of the game overall and like how we thought about the game uh generally speaking and 
I'll tell you this, it was a lot of fun. You guys can hear from us on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. We will be here for that right here on Twitch.tv slash Kukaka Show uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we have Ocean Shrine Storytime. That's me, yours truly. I'm going to be coming in here and playing Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt for the first time because this game is blowing the fuck up, apparently. And uh, it looks Ooh. like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a little Vampire Fortnite copy, which is, I heard, top 10 games of all time from Good Kraken, right, Devin? <laughs> Just some background, Mike. We did a like top 10 video games of all time segment, and Devin's pissed because I said I said it that seems Fortnite. Like he is. Yeah, he's, he's very not okay with that. Like, we... To be fair, I'm not the only one that was upset fair. about that. Yeah, a lot of people were. A lot of people. I, listen, I had to bring like our whole take, community right? was. <laughs> Real quick, what that demo what were you fighting for? I just want to know. What was I fighting for? Oh, I wanted to put Minecraft in there instead okay. for yeah. for that. It just yeah. made more sense to me. Damn, I don't fuck with any of y'all. Yeah, I'm not saying, I don't right? Play Minecraft, I, well, <laughs> but like see, I, <laughs> I attributed things like you know, like uh, Metal Gear Solid Three, and like um, oh yeah, like we we put we put yeah. some bangers on the list for sure. Okay, like God, yeah. God of War ended up being like our number one. We were like, this has okay. to be like best video game of all time. We talked about some really really great stuff. But my thing with with Fortnite was kind of like it has been such a cultural shaker in today's world that like it has to be brought to like some conversation right and they were like no fuck that dude it's minecraft <laughs> like, yeah, like, if you're gonna do one of those two it has to be it has to be yeah. minecraft i was like nah fuck you guys dude <laughs> anyways next thursday we're doing a live recording of the shipwreck show over on patreon.com slash good cracking show uh you guys can watch us record that live if you are one of our patrons we will be there if not you have to wait until the following sunday to get that episode live to the public over on our podcast channels that you can check out. Uh, that's a fun show. We talk about bullshit. You guys can come in and hang out with us. Like, uh, 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 what was our last? We I, I know we talked a little bit about. Um, uh, oh, we ranked we ranked potato chips uh, last time. That was a fun. One. <laughs> we go. We, we're probably gonna end up finishing that this week doing our potato chip ranking. It's gonna be mm. a little dorky episode. Uh, and then next Friday we are doing another splash games where in which we are playing Evil Dead the game again, uh, so that we can actually get a full swing of like a full four person party and see how that that works out a little bit better for you guys and then uh kind of get our our hands deep and dirty on that bad boy and then finally next saturday good cracking podcast again we are talking fictional characters we'd want to spend a day with that's gonna be that's gonna be a dorky one too. that sounds fun oh it's gonna mm -hmm. be oh dude it's good we, when we get into our our headlining segments that are just like ridiculous over the top conversations that's always like our best content because we can just dick around and say the yeah. obnoxious shit like oh dude i would love to go just like kick it with um i don't know Devin, give me, give me somebody who, who do you want to kick it with the verdict kratos no <laughs> Kratos. I don't know. Just, you want to kick him with Kratos for a day? Oh shit! You want to kill some gods? Boy, like, boy, boy. <laughs> That's good, dude. Guys, thank you for chilling with us. Thank you for coming in, hanging out with Mike. Uh, Mike, thank you again for hanging out with us. Go ahead and drop your links one more time. Tell the people where they can find you. You can find me and all of my bullshit at Michael P. Hyam on Twitter, and yeah. you can check out fanby.com, hit video game website where. Me and all my coworkers are putting out some good stuff. So, uh, yeah, Fanbyte's on the come up. Put yes, some respect sir. on it. God damn, mm -hmm. dude. And listen, fan Fanbyte's like one of my favorites because, like you said, you guys get to talk all the shit. And I get to yeah. like see, <laughs> see you guys talk in a way that's like not so professional, like exactly. professional enough, right? And it, it yes, makes exactly. such a good read, such a good read. Yep. <laughs> guys, thank you again. Mike, thank you. We appreciate you. We love you, dude. Thank you for representing, guys. This has been the Good Kraken Podcast. Your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you wanted to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. right here at twitch.tv slash show. If you enjoy the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash show where you can get submit questions and talk to the show, get exclusive post-show content, and have early access episodes before they go live on podcasts and video services across the digital sea. Thank you, Devin. <laughs> you can also support <laughs> us by going to our YouTube channel by clicking that beautiful bell and big red button or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken with an exclamation mark and leaving a review there. We got to get on out of here now, my friends. But until next time, mahal kita. Mwah.